SPX 2024 02 16 Drake 4995s Lexus 5000s. So I programmed a Discord bot and it's pretty sick. So I'm going to use this bot to show you and uh, demonstrate some of the exponential price action that you can get in options. So this last Friday, we had a nice gamma trade. It was a repeat of kind of the CPI trade. So we're going to talk about all of that. I'm going to show you the bot. I'm going to talk about how the, the market is, kind of likes to repeat itself. And then I'm going to show you with my bot kind of what it's used for and things like that. If you want to try the bot out, you have to join the Discord, Trade Edge. There's a link down below this video, wap.com slash Trade Edge. It's a Discord community that I run with my uh, partner in crime soul and my mic is a little bit loose here uh, but we just day trade live every single day show people how to trade that's what we're focused on our strategy we're price action traders kind of using a little bit of auction theory things like that but all of that is in the discord we have a seven day free trial check it out community is growing exponentially super excited about all of the growth and what we can do in the next coming year but for now let's go ahead and jump into the video Okay, so first let's start with the charts themselves and what is a gamma trade? Let's answer that question. So a gamma trade is specifically when you're looking for options that are going to rapidly increase in value. And I know that sounds silly. So let's talk about what gamma and delta are. If you're new to options, there's a lot to them. I can't full, do a full options one-on-one. I've done some in the past, so go search for options on my channel. There's a few different videos there. And now that I think about it, I'll do another one. But delta, delta is the, for every $1 change in the price of the underlying, that's how much the option will increase in value. And I'm doing this off the dome. I've been trading options for a while now, but let's just use an example. Let's say that you choose a contract, an Apple call with a delta of 0.3 and Apple's at $100. Okay. The, the delta is 0.3. The price of the contract, let's just say is 0.3 and price of Apple is $100. So Apple goes from $100 to $101. So the price of Apple has moved $1, which means because the contract has a delta of three, a, a delta of 0.3, it is going to increase by 0.3. So it's going to go from 0.3 to 0.6. Okay. That's a lot of different numbers. So let's review that. You have an option contract costs 0.3. It's 30 cents. It has a delta of 0.3. Apple moves from 100 to 101. So it moved $1. So the contract appreciates by its delta, which is 0.3. Cool. So what's gamma for us? Gamma is the rate of change of delta. So delta was 0.3. But by the end of that move, delta might be at 0.4. Uh-oh. So another dollar change in Apple. Now it's going to go from 0.6 plus 0.4 to a dollar. So your contract is increasing in value exponentially. Its value, the rate of change of increase is increasing. Another way to think about that is that delta is your speed, okay? You understand physics and things like that. And gamma is acceleration. That's the way that I think about it. So delta is how fast you're going. And if you wanna change how fast you're going, you have to accelerate so the speed of change, okay? Change of change is gamma. Why is gamma so important? Well, gamma, there's a ramp. If you were to plot gamma over a change in prices, and you can you can validate all this yourself. I'm not doing this video. But if you were to plot gamma over a change in prices, it goes up exponentially. And as you increase delta, as delta increases from 0.3 to 0.4 to 0.5, as prices increase, value of your option goes up exponentially. And that's how you can get options that go from a dollar or 0.3 to $3. So 30 cents to $3 is a 10x change. And we'll actually see that. We'll plot that using my option box. So that's what a gamma trade is. You kind of just have to know that intuitively because of theta and things like that, it will drop off, right? So there, it's a very steep ramp and it goes both ways. It's very important. The gamma ramp goes both ways, guys. And so that exponential increase can really hit at the very last leg of a move. But as soon as it pulls back, even just a few ticks, it's going to slide back down that ramp quick. So you have to take profits quickly when you're doing these gamma trades and risk, risk management is super important. So for example, one of the things I'll do is say I buy 10 contracts for a gamma trade. I will sell seven. As soon as they go 300%, then I'll hold three. Now I might have intuition that the move is going to go up to six, seven, eight hundred percent but I'm not going to mess around with that. Okay. Now I, I just made those numbers up and my be 500%, it could be 1,000%. The point is, I'm taking, I'm locking in profits for sure. 100% locking in profits because gamma goes both ways. Very lo A lot of times when you're doing these gamma trades, especially with zeros, you don't have time to hold these. They will, they will go to zero. So your contract could go from 30 cents to $3 to zero. Okay. So there's a little, I said I wasn't going to do an options one-on-one. I did it anyways. It's kind of necessary though. I want to make sure, make sure you guys are equipped and understand this properly before you try to do these things so you don't burn up a lot of capital. Okay. So let's actually look at the chart. So here's SPX on the right, NQ, and let's get ES. We actually don't need NQ, but we'll leave, we'll just we'll zoom in. So we're going to zoom into ES on the five minute and we're going to go to Tuesday. So CPI was released on Tuesday and we're going to look at Tuesday's price action. If you're not familiar with this, this is trading view. I use it for all of my charting. It's a great tool. Go check it out. All of our indicators and things I actually added indicators to my bots. So if you want to see all the indicators, they're listed there in the bot as well. Check it out. 
TPI. TPI data is released at 8.30. Let's just talk about this move here. So we get the 8.30 drop off. Okay. Sell off. We consolidate. We consolidate midday. So we consolidate here. We can do a little bounce here, a little bounce here. We can see the volume shelf that was developed over here. Uh, we bounce and then we do a second leg lower. Now, just visually before I even measure this, you can see that this second leg is very close. So 52 points, very close to this first leg. First leg is 66 points. When I say measured moves, and I talk about measured moves all the time, I'm always looking for a leg that's nearly equal to the first leg. Uh, this was a little bit shorter, which is fine. But if you were to short this, that's what you would have looked for. I'm not going to talk about the CPI trades I took. That's not the point of this video. The point is that this price action happened, that we had a move and then we had a continuation out of data, right? It did not, it did not reclaim this move. We did not come all the way back up to the open. We continued, we had this continuation move. So I was looking on Friday for a replay of this type of price action. So let's go to Friday. Very quickly, you can see it is not an exact re replay. I want to call that out because this is going to confuse some people. I'm looking for a replay of this narrative. I'm looking for an initial move with data and then I'm looking for a second secondary move in the same direction with strength. That's that's what I'm looking for. Now, in retrospect, very clearly, there were some hiccups there, but I called this out live. I called the price action in the Discord live. You can join the Discord. You can go look. I said the market's going to do an M right at 1.30 p.m. So when we got to about here, right, 1.30, I said the market is very likely going to do an M and drop off. So we'll also call it. Uh, we weren't on voice at the same time. I think he was on voice and he called it live and I was just I was just watching the charts still. Going to do an M and you can see that we did the M. So the gamma trade was from, and we'll use an arrow actually. So the gamma trade was from here to really here was, is the primary gamma trade. And then there was a little extension at the end. There were some nice trades here that I took actually here. So there was a hundred percent intraday kind of trade, a short trade that I took from here to here. That was nice as well. I was actually looking for that move. This first move here, I was actually was looking for the gamma trade here. I was actually looking for it here. So I was fishing there, did not hit and had to get out. So there's a few things I want to talk about first, volume profile, volume profile, volume profile. So let's get rid of the session volume profile and let's zoom out to the entire chart. And we got to do this quickly here because I still got to talk about a lot of these options. Otherwise this video will be an hour. I don't think you guys realize how hard it is to keep these videos concise. If you go back to my old OG videos, they're all like 30 minutes. They're super long. They're all stock analysis, which is all stuff I like to do, but you guys don't like to watch it. So we're gonna keep it short. So you can see here where the market where we dropped off, there's a little shelf right down here. There's a shelf up in here. So all of these shelves on the higher time frames. let's go to the 15 minute. I'm gonna get a little bit more price action in on these shelves here. We can see we're inside this bigger channel here, bottom trend line, top trend line here. And you can see that we bounce. There's a, a lot of accumulation here at 5,012. There's this macro pivot at 5,030, which was the previous you know market pivot on the macro going way back to you know, pre-COVID highs. And we can see the swing up here. So all of this context, here in terms of the gamma looking for 5,000 below as a possible target and then 4840 we've talked a lot about 4840 uh, down here below so this M we're looking for a continuation here that's important because why would the market M on a Friday it's like well there has to be some downside there has to be some downside target for us to hit for us to do a sell-off on a Friday or Friday price action in particular can be a little wonky etc etc so let's zoom back in we'll get our session volume profile back on and let's look at how this replayed so we had the, the initial move of data this is PPI data by the way it came up we consolidated got a little bit of bounce back up and here's this structure here is super important guys the fact that we came here we failed to sweep overnight highs super duper important i've seen an m before so if you haven't seen this price action before that could be a little weird it's also a friday and there are downside liquidity targets right we're near the top of the market so there's a lot of reasons why this could reverse also and it's gonna be hard to pull up in this video there was a huge oi wall uh, right at this price at on spx not on es so if we go to spx we'll zoom in this is the spx chart that i'm pulling up here so at five thousand. 2040, which is right here, there is a huge open interest wall here, huge OI wall. What does that mean? That means that there were a ton of op open call positions here. And if those go in the money, all those people have to get paid. Now, just because there's an OI wall doesn't mean it won't be breached. If you day trade every day, you'll notice that OI gets breached off time. Timing, timing, timing is important. When you're the highs of the market, it's near the end of the day. In order for this to break this wall at this time on a Friday, the market has to squeeze. And so I would probably, I would be looking for volume on the lower time frames indicative of a squeeze and i'd also be watching the book on book map which i was doing to indicate a squeeze none of that was there so very likely this was going to reverse which it did it's never 100 guys i'm going to call it out we were right this time doesn't mean we're right every time but if i said hey there's a 90 percent chance you know this is going to happen you're not going to go for the 10 percent chance outcome especially when you're betting money it doesn't make any sense so there's a lot of reasons for this to go down we had the m shape we had the oi friday and the repeat of cpi okay 
confluence, confluence, confluence. Always look for confluence. We had it. Cool. So what did this look like? Well, let's go to our bot and you can kind of see here. Let's ignore this. Let's go to trade edge. We'll just go to the, I uh, will stay on the, the, the profit floor for now. So this is a bot I coded up. I do have a software engineering background, which you may not know, but I do, right? So I coded up this nice little discord bot. It's comprised of an API and the actual discord bot itself. But what is it used for? So if we go to discord, we can do something like slash tickers and we could do SPX. We want to look at Friday expiration. So that's 2024.02. Um, what was Friday? I can't think of days of the week. Friday was 16th, 16. And the strike we want was right around the VAL at the time, which was this 5,015 put, I think. Let's look at 5,015 puts on that day. Yeah. So we want to look at 5,015 strikes. So I'm going to get the weeklies, the puts, so I can copy this ticker. You can see that I give you a nice little output here and I'll do slash chart ticker and then I'll give the day that I want to chart it 0216. You can see here that we're a fun little community. I don't know what they're top, talking about. So this is, these are these contracts here. So first and foremost, these calculations, I still have to update this, but we can see here that these options went from the lowest here, 0 0.6, scanning here, 0 0.6, all the way up to $5. So up here is, well, obviously the, the highest here. Let me zoom in on this actually. Uh, one of the cool things you can do with this is I can whoops scoot this over and i can zoom in on just this part of the chart cool so for here we can see the height of this candle highest is 11.7 so it went from 0.65 to 11.7 so a ton of opportunity there i'm actually going to share this in the discord crazy gamma friday Wish I hit it. So that was, that's how the bot is used. It also supports a few other things. So if you want to do indicators, it'll give you a list of indicators, all right? This is ephemeral, it tells me all the indicators that I can use. And I gotta tell my, my, my homies, AI doesn't work. Uh, well, they can figure that out. There's a nice little help message if you want to figure it out. That gives you an overview of all of the things, right? So that's what the bot is for. Let's look at another expiry though. So we'll do SPX 2024-02-16. And I want to look at 5,010 puts. And I want to do chart this on 2024-02-16. So these are the 5,010 puts, which went from about 55 cents up to seven. So there was a lot of opportunity there. But the point is, the point is I have a bot. We have a nice little bot. And if I want to be slick, I can do tickers. I can paste this. And instead of modifying the whole thing, I know that I want, let's do 4980. So it's 5,010. I could just change this to 4980 expiration 2024. 0216. Whoops, this is the wrong one. This is the tickers. We want chart. Chart, 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 chart. Slash chart. That ticker. We want to change this to 4980. 49 the 90s actually. And 2024 0216. Make sure I'm not trying to chart a put a day after its expiration. 5010. No, we want 4995s. Anyways, well, let's actually try it. SPX. 2024, 02, 16, strike, 4995s. Actually, this is two 5000s. And yeah, so then we'll do chart. 2024, 02, 16. This gave me five cents to 13. This is up to about four. So there was a lot of gamma, gamma opportunities there. So that's what the bot does. Yeah, that's it, guys. Gonna add a bunch more stuff to it. It is free to use if you're a premium user. So basically, if you pay for the premium Discord or if you're here for the seven days free trial, you can use it. Gonna add a ton of more stuff to it, the ability to save these charts. Ultimately, I'm really big on journaling and being able to look back at price action and, and opportunities. And so really, that's what this bot is for. Yeah, that's really it for this video, though, guys. I hope you found this useful. Useful. You see here, you know, this is the Discord community. If you're curious what we talk about, we're, we're always here to help people. We have a free chat here, which you can see. Hey guys, I'm pretty new to trading. Could someone guide me to where I can start learning? Yeah. Let's say check out my day trading 101 playlist on YouTube. Well, that's the video, guys. Stop sharing my screen. Please do join the Discord if you want to start prop trading yourself. Use the links down below. So wap.com slash trade edge has links to both the Discord as well as free trading journals. I created these journals so that you guys have the right tools to start day, day trading. You cannot improve what you don't measure. You can't improve what you don't measure. You can't improve what you don't measure. So if you've been trading for a while and you feel like you're at a ceiling, don't really know what's wrong or you know how to improve things, it's probably because you're not taking notes. Um, if I ask you like, hey, what are your best performing trades over the last month? What are your worst performing trades? What time of the day is the best for you? Really easy to answer questions. If you're journaling, there are things like Tradezilla, which I use. I don't have an affiliate for them, but I always mention them. They're a great tool. They'll do all the number crunching for you. Uh, the Notion is another tool that I use. It's a really just a flexible tool. I use it for journaling all my trades. That's where my template is. So my free journal template is a Notion. Download that. You have no excuse. If you're failing, it's because you don't deserve 
deserve to be successful, quite frankly. I believe everybody can be successful only if you do the right things, guys. It really is that simple. It's like running a marathon. Marathon is one of the easiest things to train for. All you got to do is run. I'm telling you as a runner. Now, a lot of people aren't willing to get up and run every day. And that's just a fact. And if you're not willing to do the things every day that are going to make capable of the outcome, then you're just straight up going to fail. And unsurprisingly so. Anyways, or in any case, my name is Forrest. I invest stuff. You should too. See you in the next video. Peace.